This morning we want to look at and talk about um, believe your debt is more than paid. In the time during coronavirus season, you need to believe that your debt is more than paid because Jesus is an overpayment. Jesus was an overpayment. So believe where you are right now that your debt is overpaid and we're going to show you what we're talking about as we go throughout the lesson this morning in first corinthians 2 and 12 it says that now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god now i want you to imagine with me a little scenario uh, that i have here you borrowed uh, a large sum of money from a friend, an associate, and you promised that person that you would pay them back in six months. But when the time came to pay them back in six months, uh, you felt really bad because you could not repay him and because you didn't have the money. And so a year rolled around and you still couldn't pay them a cent. Now you feel extremely guilty, so you go out of your way to avoid that person to avoid the embarrassment and the shame when you see them because you can't pay them back. So now let's say that you had another friend who was your best friend and he hears about your plight, about you or dodging a person that you had borrowed money from. And out of the abundance of this best friend's heart, he goes to your creditor that you owed and he says, hey, look, I understand that my best friend owes you money. And so the, the person said, yes, he owes me a lot of money. He owes me like $50,000. And so the best friend said, well, here is $100,000. And then so the creditor said, but he only owes me $50,000. Now, your best friend says, I know he owes you only uh, $50,000, but take this $100,000 so that you can never say that he still owes you money. So he doubled what? the guy owed him. So now your debt is paid in full. In fact, it's more than paid in full. But if you don't know or believe this, so that debt will still be on your conscience, thinking that you owed it because you don't know that it's been paid. You'll still be afraid to see your creditor. You'll still be ducking and dodging from the person you borrowed the money from. You would avoid him because every time you see him, he reminds you that you owe him money. Now, you need to know that Jesus was an overpayment, say overpayment, he was an overpayment when he offered himself as an offering for our sin, because the quality and the worth of the man himself, and he overpaid for our sins when he became our sacrifice on the cross. Jesus made an overpayment for our sin when he died on the cross for us. So you need to know that Jesus was an overpayment when he offered himself for your sin because the quality and the worth of the man himself and he overpaid for your sins when he became your sacrifice on the cross now that's good but when you don't know this and you don't believe this you will suffer and in your unbelief and it will rob you of the assurance it'll rob you of your love and it'll rob you of your peace with god you still have debt on your conscience, even though God is not imputing sin to you. Sin is still on your conscience. Sin was paid for. I don't care any sin you want to name. Uh, bite, biting, smoking, drinking, homonging. Any sin you name, it was paid for on that, on that cross. But as long as that sin is on your conscience, what I did last night, you won't dare to draw near to Jesus. You will continue to think that you've messed up and you try to run and hide every time. So I'm saying this morning, enter into God's rest. The truth is that your sins have been more than paid for. Jesus was an overpayment. So draw near to God today with no sin conscious. Be full of God consciousness. You are probably familiar with the story of David and uh, with his slaying and, and the stone and how he slew uh, Goliath, which was a 10 foot, uh, Philistine warrior. But have you ever wondered why David succeeded while the others in the army of Israel did not dare to go out to face Goliath? David's secret was 
that he was only conscious of victory and not defeat because he knew that he knew God who had rescued him many times and he had won the battle and he had victory in it. And so you can imagine David saying, one day I was taking care of my sheep, my father's sheep, when a lion came and he took one of them and I was not willing to settle for that. I went and I, I slew that lion and got that sheep uh, out of the lion's mouth. He says, on another occasion, a bear came and he took one of my flock. He says, I went after that bear and I smoked him. And so the Lord delivered me from that too. He says, this same God who delivered me from the paws of the lion and of the bear will also deliver me from the Philistines. So he had a, a positive attitude. He was conscious of what God uh, had done for him. And that fighting, that's what we call fighting from victory that I talked about on yesterday. He knew that God was with him, loved him, favored him, and would give him victory again. Because if God did it in the past, most certainly he can do it now and in the future. You can also uh, be reminded of yourself with this same God who did tremendous things for you in the past. You can think about something, okay? And he'll help you out today. He'll be right there for you today. But like David, who was conscious only of God's goodness and faithfulness, don't be like the arm of Israel who were afraid. They only spoke of the negative things about Goliath. I must believe that those negative things are not a threat to me because of what the word says. And I have to completely, constantly repeat the word, repeat the word over and over again until it fills my heart and it removes all of the fear that's bottled up in there. Our scripture again says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things we have been freely given to us from him. Don't feed on negative words of the man about or the, or the devil. It will only cause you to be anxious and fearful. Feed on the word of God. Read the word of God daily. Listen to tapes. Listen to messages about who you are in Christ and what Christ has done for you. Pump yourself up in the word. Pump yourself up in the word so that you feel, feel in your spirit, man, and you have a, a, a consciousness of who God is in your life so that you might know the things that have been freely given to you. I don't care what debt you are going through right now during this coronavirus period. You must believe that your debt is more than paid, that Jesus is an overpayment. And when you open up your wallet, you say, hmm, where did this money come from? Where did this money come from? Because Jesus is an overpayment and he's there to help you throughout all of your need. Amen. So believe your debt is paid this morning. Why, Pastor? Because Jesus did a 100% overpayment when he poured his, and I like what Pastor says, his efficacious blood on that cross and died for our sin. Amen.